Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dollar Tree decor crafts. So happy Easter weekend as well as a true blessing and honor to have you all here. I hope you all are having a gorgeous, blessed weekend wherever you're at. And also I would love to invite you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you subscribe and punch all on the little bell. It will update you every single time I post a new video. I would also love to invite you over to my Livia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I have a free little group page you all can join to post photos of your home decor and DIY um, projects and inspirations. So thank you guys again for being here. Also, don't forget to enter my $100 Hobby Lovey gift card giveaway. The details are going to be in the description box, but basically you guys have to comment and subscribe to be able to enter. And subscribing is totally free. So you guys, I know you you're here for the crafting without further ado let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns get out your glitter and paint and let's get to craft right, you how to take a little garden tin and really you could use any garden tin or clay pot and we're going to turn this into a little summer gnome and this could be for any season as well so i'm using this elephant gray waverly chalk paint i've been using this a lot I'm just kind of into this gray color and also my white chalk paint is out um, but i chalk painted the little garden tin and flipped it over and then I'm just taking this piece of fabric. It's actually a pillow covering from a while back and I wasn't using it for a pillow covering anymore so I'm just hot gluing it around the top of my little tin. It is in a square shape and you could make the little hat first and then attach it to your gnome um, but this was just seemed like the easiest method for me and then I flipped it on its side and then stuffed it. I did have to remove a little bit of the stuffing. It got a little bit too full and I know everybody wants their gnome hats to look a little bit different so some some of you just maybe want to do it like where it flops over and not use the stuffing or you could stuff it lightly or you could stuff it really heavy and actually make the little gnome hat stand up so I just folded the fabric over and then kind of hot glued it and pinched it together and I think too I maybe should have like gathered the fabric a little bit more towards the top um, and made it a little bit smaller but I thought it was pretty cute you guys and I always feel like too when you make gnomes you can really give yourself some grace I add a little pom-pom to the end of the hat and then I just took some white paint and created a little beard so it was super simple now my friend Shannon at the Daily DIYer I saw on her Instagram that she made this really cool um, gnome with clay pots. She used several clay pots actually, so go check her out. It's Shannon at the Daily DIY. I absolutely love her. She has really cool DIYs. Um, but yeah, so she did a really neat one. And this is what kind of inspired me to use like a gardening pot to make a gnome. And so then I just popped a little wooden um, nose onto it. And then I also used some of this ribbon and that just kind of, you know, made it look a little bit more cute. And I know gnomes are supposed to be boys, but I couldn't resist just adding a bow to the end of his hat. You guys know me. I love my bows and I cannot lie with, oh my goodness. I just thought it turned out really cute. I popped it into my little summer decor here. And so just think about this. You guys can always change up any gnome hat to suit your style of decor. So you can make this 4th of July, you could make this Christmas, fall, summer, whatever suits your fancy. Just customize it with your favorite paint colors. Have fun with it. Get creative. This would be a great idea, fun to do with kiddos too. Just make sure you help them with the glue gun. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you how you can take some of these super adorable Dollar Tree placemats. Now, these are the lemon placemats. They're also putting out sunflower placemats. And so I'm just using this piece of fabric. It's a yellow and white um, gingham check. And I flipped both sides to the outer side because I'm going to hot glue this pillow. Yes, hot glue. It works for me. This is just a decorative pillow. It's not gonna be used on an everyday basis. You guys can always sew this if you're a seamstress or you have a sewing machine. So whatever suits your fancy is what you should do. Um, but I am going just going to hot glue it. This is regular high heat glue gun. Um, I do have my glue gun linked in my Amazon store if you guys wanna check that out. And I am going to trim off the edges and you want to glue three sides. And I like to leave the end open to where I can stuff my pillow. Always remember to face the two sides 
that you want to be facing out, face them inward when you're gluing. <laughs> I made that mistake before. Okay, so I flipped my little pillow inside out, and then I'm just gonna take some stuffing from another pillow that I wasn't using anymore that had seen better days, and I'm just gonna stuff my little yellow lemon pillow. And then you're gonna wanna tuck your edges in, and very carefully, and this is the trickier part right here, slowly hot glue those edges as they're tucked in. And I mean tricky because it can be easy to like get little glue gun burns. You can always use those little finger covers as well. But just begin to tuck those edges, glue them to get a nice little seam at the end. This would also be a point too that you might want to sew the ends up. That wouldn't be that hard to do, but <laughs> for this video, and I'm an instant girl, I just went ahead and hot glued it. So. And these pillows hold up really nicely, especially if they're just going to be interior little decorator pillows that you're going to pop on to your um, little side chair or a sofa spot. And here is how it turned out, popped into my little summertime setting. So the little Bless This Kitchen actually came from Hobby Lobby, and then the cute little lemon decor dishes are out at Dollar Tree right now. And if you can't find them, don't stress out, and you have to have some lemon dishes. I did pop some lemon dishes into my Amazon store. They're really cute. Hobby Lobby also is carrying some lemon dishes for a while. I haven't been in actually in a couple of weeks, but I'm definitely going to be popping in there very soon to see what kind of seasonal decor they're putting out and by seasonal decor I'm talking fall you guys okay I know it's early but when we go over the top decorating we love to hand make a lot of items there's no hurt in just checking and seeing what they're putting out I have done a ton of summer videos for you guys so anyway it's so fun and fabulous on a budget Now for this next at Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to take one of those Dollar Tree love signs. And really, you guys could do this with pretty much any Dollar Tree sign. So they're always putting out some kind of sign for every season. And to be honest with you, this was actually left over from Valentine's Day. I do like to buy a little bit of extra decor um, during Valentine's Day, just kind of during, you know, the bridal season to share with you guys some little bridal ideas. So I think this would be so cute, like for a little farmhouse wedding, um, a table topper, or just for your home. Um, if you love love like I do. And so I'm using some Waverly gray elephant gray chalk paint. Again, I've been crushing on this color lately. I don't know why. It's just so pretty to me. Um, but the next thing I did after I got a good heavy layer of chalk paint on there, and I think for this, I only use one layer of chalk paint. I went in with one of these little Dollar Tree sponge brushes and then some white paint. And I did kind of dab off the white paint on to um, my little uh, paper towel here. And then I just kind of distressed it with the white paint. And I mean, I could have used a little bit less paint. I kind of feel like some of the areas got a little bit too much on there but if that happens you guys could always take a touch of sandpaper and kind of a sandpaper um, that off that would help as well or if you guys wanted a more rustic look here's another idea is just to add um, some like little wax stain over that but again you guys can really do this with pretty much any little Dollar Tree sign and then I did go back in with my brush and add in a little bit more gray and then the last thing I decided to do was add a bow okay you guys know me I love my bows and so I just tied this cute little Dollar Tree polka dot bow and an easy bow and this is what I call a shoelace bow so it's just a bow like you would be tying your shoes and then I added some hot glue and I popped it on to this little spot right here it's a really simple little bow because it's a small sign somewhat so I didn't want to just overwhelm the sign I thought it looked simple and cute and it would go perfectly in with this little summer decor For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to take one of those Dollar Tree planters and jazz them up with some contact paper. So Dollar Tree has been putting out all different kinds of contact paper, and this is actually kind of one that they've had forever, but I'm just measuring it to go around the base of my planter, and then I'm going to just trim it off. And I also wanted to kind of give this little creation a bit of a French farmhouse flair, so I thought this black and white would be really cute. And then if I change my mind and want to go just back to the black, all I have to do is peel off the contact paper. So I do love that option as well. Now, originally I was hoping that I could just wrap the contact paper around the planter, but that really didn't work. I ended up having to cut different sections um, of the contact paper and then apply it. And 
I will tell you that the Dollar Tree contact paper is actually pretty easy to work with. So give yourself some grace with it. Like if it bubbles up, you can just kind of pull it off and then reapply it. And also think about this. It's only $1. So if you mess up a strip of it and you have to, you know, throw it away, it's not the end of the world. Although it's very forgiving, to be honest with you. Now, if you want even more options on contact paper, I will tell you that Walmart has contact paper and it's super adorable. And a lot of times you can find the Pioneer Woman um, contact paper. So there's a lot of really bright colors. But I think that this black and white roses is probably one of my favorites from Dollar Tree as far as giving like a French farmhouse look. So again, I just did have to go ahead and trim off some sections and reapply it. And I feel like that's kind of how you have to do in life. Sometimes you just have to keep trying things, trimming things off to make them work. But more than anything, just putting one foot in front of the other and not giving up is probably one of the most important things. And I know that's a little bit deep for contact paper, but recently I've been going through some stuff and I'm just really trying to remind myself to give myself some grace and keep putting one foot in front of the other. So if you guys are listening to this right now and you need to hear that message, that's what I'm going to tell you. Give yourself grace, keep putting one foot in front of the other. And even if you have to do some cutting and pasting to make things work in the end, you're going to get there and it's going to be okay. So keep going. Don't give up. Okay. So again, a little bit deep for contact paper and planters, but a fun idea as well. So I found this cute little um, burlap ribbon. They're carrying this at Dollar Tree as well. And I decided to trim out the base and also the top. And that's going to make it just look a little bit nicer. My lines on my cutting on my contact paper wasn't super clean. And again, I did want to give it a bit of a French farmhouse flair. Now to top everything off, I'm going to add in some styrofoam and these cute little greenery pieces. And then that's going to be pretty much it. I've really been loving the Dollar Tree greenery pieces. I feel like they're really nice this year and there's a lot of options to choose from. So here it is popped into my little setting. So fun and fabulous on a total budget. For this next DIY, I want to share with y'all how you can take one of these super adorable little teapots that you might find at the thrift store or you might already have one already in your stash. I found this one for a couple bucks at my local thrift store. I decided to take it and create a really pretty little floral arrangement in it. So I just popped the styrofoam into the center and then I'm getting creative with some florals that are actually floating around in my craft stash. I think it's always nice to dig into your craft stash and kind of try to use what you already have. So I'm starting out kind of mixing and some greenery and just some of these white florals. I want to make it feel fresh and summery. So I'm adding in some bright oranges and yellows. Another little tip I'm going to have for you guys that I would suggest is to keep an eye out for end of clearance summer florals. Most of the um, crafty decor stores will put out sunflowers that are a little bit brightly colored. They're going to be a bit brighter in shades and hues with oranges and yellows, but you can use them in your fall decor. And actually I'm pretty excited because some of these oranges and yellows are looking pretty with the blues. So I know sometimes a lot of people are say, oh, well fall doesn't go with my decor, but they've been really getting also creative in the different colors that they're putting out for fall. They're doing a lot of sage greens. You can even find purple and pink pumpkins. So really there's almost any fall decor and I will be sharing with you guys a ton of different DIYs for fall as well. So here is how this looks. I thought it was fresh and summery and fun and just with those bright added pops of color it's definitely going to bring a ray of sunshine into your space and you guys can always customize it to match your decor with a changing of the flowers and the base that you choose so as always i ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite diy in this video and which one will you be recreating i'm going to be putting out a new giveaway for you all and it's going to be a 100 hobby lobby gift card all you have to do to enter is to subscribe to my youtube channel and comment down below 
So I'll ask you secret questions in the next couple weeks for the different videos. And in two weeks, I'll announce the winner of my $100 giveaway. And the secret question for this video is what is your favorite beautiful word? Let's light up the comment say section with grace, peace, beauty, joy, whatever you love. And then here is Benji Bear and Benji Bear, my puppy dog. Oh my goodness. He's such a little ham. And I just thought you guys would smile seeing his face. So I love y'all. Thank you for being here. And don't forget to drop a comment down below. Parks and at Dollar Tree DIY. Doing. I want to share with y'all how to take one of these wooden crosses and detach the little base. And then you can use some really beautiful craft paper to craft on top of. So at Hobby Lobby, they have every kind of pattern and color under the sun. You could also paint these beautiful craft um, crosses, but I'm just going to use this pretty Mackenzie Child inspired paper. Again, I did get this at Hobby Lobby at 69 cents. I traced around my cross. Also look for the coupons on their paper goods. Um, they'll run sales every week with different goodies and they'll always throw some paper in there here and there. One of the ladies at the front told me about that. So anyway, go ahead and trim out the outline of your cross. And then I'm just using a really nice gener generous layer of Mod Podge for this. And I did end up having to use like several coats here. The wooden crafts um, from Dollar Trailer in the crafters square section like this are always a little bit porous and so it does take a little bit more to get that on so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down and smooth it out and then add another layer of Mod Podge and so originally I thought I was gonna Mod Podge this fab or this um, pattern to both sides I did actually end up taking this elephant Waverly chalk paint and chalk painting the base of my cross and then also the back. I just thought that would look kind of pretty and classy and it's also very neutral, which I love to kind of mix in neutrals really for pretty much any season. Now I hot glued the cross back onto the base and again, I was actually gonna do a little bit of a different DIY and not use the base, but I ended up deciding to just put the base back on and then I did trim the edges with some of the Waverly um, chalk paint. You would probably actually want to do this as the first step, but live and learn from my mistake. It came out really cute. I feel like anyway, um, it gave it kind of a little bit of a distressed edge and I did even distress the front of it with a bit of sandpaper. So really have fun with this project. Get creative. These are out right now at our Dollar Tree in the Crafters Square section. I thought they were so pretty. I picked up two of this style and then they had another one with like a cross cut out. I'm also using this um, premium paint pen. I love these. It's the gold paint pen and it really just jazzes things up and makes things a little bit extra special and sparkly. So again, um, this is the gold premium paint pen. It's Art Deco paint pen. You can get Michaels. You can also order it off of Amazon. So here is how it looks and I'm just going to pop it in with my little display here. I think this is going to be so perfect really to move around anywhere. Probably pop it into my coffee bar. I do love to say a good morning cup of coffee with you guys every morning on my Instagram story with my scripture cards and I do get those at Dollar Tree so I love y'all and I hope you're enjoying this one this next at Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of the little burner covers from the Dollar Tree and some of this Dollar Tree nautical rope. I'm going to hot glue it in the center and then wind it around the center point, just making a kind of a cute little swirly basket weave idea here. So I want to make a little mini tray and I want this to be something I can pop out into my patio or just in any little space. I've made some of these, but they're all a lot larger. So I thought it would be really fun just to have a smaller one. So just keep wrapping your nautical rope and gluing it.
Once I had the whole little rope attached to my burner cover, I then took two little pieces of rope and decided to create some handles. Again, I want to create like a little mini tray. Um, Dolly Tree is carrying these really cute like little farmer's market type signs and I chose this locally grown fresh produce. And so I also will tell you to glue your handles up just a little bit further. I was wanting my round sign to kind of sit flat down on my basket tray, but it ended up kind of being a little bit elevated, so it works fine. But just if you want it to sit down flat, um, uh, put your handles up a little bit further. But I added handles to either side, and then you could honestly just be done here. You could put a cute little bead or something, you know, to cover just that edge. But I think it's pretty cute as is. And then I'm just going to add this little um, doodly dad. Again, that's that little round. It's like a plant stake, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm going to add that to the center. And then I also decided to add a layer of Mod Podge. And that way, if somebody wanted to sit a drink on this, it wouldn't, like... Um, mess up the front of it because it is going to be kind of a little bit of a tray that I'm probably going to use kind of maybe as a coaster or probably just actually for a candle which is how I'm displaying it here but anyway I thought that was a really fun idea just for something different and if you want to create a little tray you guys could also do this with like a square tray and one of the square dollar tree signs I don't know honestly the sky is the limit have fun with it get creative and go for it For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these little blue trucks, and these are one of the 4th of July trucks. Now, I did buy two because I want to use one in my 4th of July display, and then one I wanted to use like in my lemon kitchen area, so I'm going to do a repaint on this truck. Now, don't panic, you guys. This is an absolutely adorable truck. I still have my other USA truck, but I did want to make one that would just kind of match my lemon decor. So I'm taking and I'm laying down a base of the white Waverly chalk paint, and that is going to cover some of the extra glittery and bumpy parts on my actual little truck. And then I'll go in with some of the Waverly elephant chalk paint and just chalk paint um, the edges right here. And this is above like the little tire wheel spot. If you're a car person, let me know what this would probably be called. I guess it's the truck. Um, oh, my son would kill me because he's a total tr car truck person. Anyway, I am detailing this to the best of my ability and knowledge and just trying to make it super cute with some fun neutral colors. Now when you're painting these trucks, don't panic if things look a little bit wonky. You can always go back in and fix it with a little bit of a detail brush. I did go ahead and paint the back of it gray. And then I painted my little wheels and tires. And then I'm just again using some more shading and some detail work. So really for something like this, a couple of different colors of gray, some whites and blacks are going to give you a pretty good little effect. And now I'm just going to hot glue this cute little mint sign onto the front. Now it's actually not technically going to be a mint carrying truck, but the sign was the perfect size for this. I'm going to pop some lemons into the bed of my truck, some pineapples, and then some of 
the lemon leaves and I'm gonna hope the lemon leaves kind of look like mints. Okay, so these lemon plates I actually got at Hobby Lobby. Um, now they are carrying some different little fruit plates at the Dollar Tree or you guys could just use some yellow foam or construction paper. Um, get creative with it. These little mini wooden pineapples are also from the Dollar Tree, but I just thought this was such a fun little happy truck and again, it matches my kitchen. Um, so anyway, just get creative with it. You guys could do a watermelon truck. You could do an herb truck, lemons, um, you know, anything that floats your boat that you, pops into your brain. I do love to buy, you know, one extra of the truck so I can kind of sometimes do these little cute repaints. I hope you guys are loving it. Comment and let me know what you guys think. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these Dollar Tree burner covers. I love this one. It says, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Super great motto for me right now. And so I just hot glued a piece of wire to the back and then I put a piece of cardboard over that wire to kind of keep the little burner cover on and then just wired it to this wreath form. This wreath form is about a 14 inch wreath form. Um, it could have been a little bit bigger, but hey, we're gonna use what we have on hand. The next thing I'm doing is using some of this Dollar Tree greenery. I'm going to hot glue the ends of the greenery and these do come in bundles. So there's about six to seven a bundle and you can just trim them off with your wire cutter and then I'm adding in some more greenery in and around the little burner cover. You can also find these grapevine wreaths at pretty much any craft store or your Walmart for about four to five dollars. So continue to hot glue some pretty greenery in and around it. I thought that greenery would be really nice. Um, leaving kind of just the pops of yellow here and there. I didn't have a whole super ton of lemons left because I've already done one of my lemon wreaths and I've already done some other lemon crafts, but I thought this would be a fun one. I just really, really, really love this saying. I think it's amazing and I think it's a good thing to keep in mind always. Um, no matter what is going on in your life, when life gives you lemons, you can make lemonade. Just try not to let those lemons turn you sour or bitter. So I'm really trying to remember that. Okay, now go ahead and make a cute little Olivia bow. I'm gonna use this Mackenzie Child's ribbon I had left over from Christmas. You're just gonna take the ribbon and loop it over on itself. I did that twice to give me four loops. And listen, if you need a good bow video, just drop down into my YouTube description box and there's a bow video you guys can find. It's a Christmas video, but it's gonna share with you guys how to make a quick little Olivia bow. They're so easy, oh my goodness. I wanna take a zip tie to the center here, a zip tie up to the center, and then you just wanna give it a good fluff it up. And then you have a fabulous little bow, and that's the secret to all my bows is all that fluffing. And I also suggest to always try to use wired ribbon. That's super helpful as well. So once I had the ribbon fluffed out, I just wanted to go ahead and take another zip tie and a zip tie to that, to the wreath. I always used to use pipe cleaners, but I'm really finding that I like zip ties better, so much better um, because they really keep everything on really nicely. So I'm just fluffing out my ribbon. Now I think it's super cute as is, but you know, I have to go a little bit extra step and there's my creative direction director in the background, Benji Bear, my puppy dog. He wants me to play with them. Um, but I'm going to use this blue ribbon and I made another quick little Olivia bow. The blue ribbon I did get off of Amazon and I used it last year as well. So it did last me quite a bit of a long time. I'm going to zip tie that to the center of my black and white check bow. And then there you guys have that. You can add some lemons. I added some of the lemons and Dollar Tree limes. They have a lot of limes out this year. Oh, and also you guys keep an eye out for those Dollar Tree lemon dishes. I saw some in my store yesterday, so they should be out in your store, hopefully. Um, I also have some lemon dishes linked to my Amazon store too. So what is your favorite uh, motto in life? That's gonna be the secret question for this video. So if you're wondering what a secret question is, well, I do have a Cricut Joy giveaway that I'm going to be giving away. So I like to ask you all a secret question in every single one of my videos. It gives you guys an opportunity to connect and also to win the Cricut Joy. So just drop a comment down below. What is your favorite motto? Your favorite little quick thing that you love to pop out? Um, you know, it could be a little, 
a token of scripture. Let's light up the comment section with some positive vibes. I think I really need that. And I know it can help others as well. Um, but for me right now, it's when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And so I hope wherever you're at and whatever you have going on, you're making the best of it and making that sweet little glass of lemonade. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these super adorable little Dollar Tree frames. These are out right now in our stores and they're a larger, I believe eight by 10 size. And they're really, really cute. I mean, you could totally use them as is. I got the idea to just go ahead and pop some of my McKenzie Child's um, pattern. This is just from Hobby Lobby. It's just a little paper pattern. And I'm measuring it to measure the size of the backing of the frame. And I didn't even realize you could remove the backing and then add an insert. Or you could even add in... Um, a piece of glass or gosh even a mirror I don't know <laughs> so anyway um, I did cut that piece of I keep wanting to say fabric but it's paper I'm popping it back into the frame and then voila I have this really cute little customized frame I do like the black but I just thought it'd be neat now listen Dollar Tree is also selling these paper cutouts if you want to do some larger paper cutout decor you could mod podge these make them into a banner I decided just to pop it onto the center of my little um, picture frame here. You could also put some of your kids' pictures in there, but I thought it was such a happy, a fun little way to bring some sunshine and lemon fresh goodness to my decor. So I love y'all. Thank you so, so much for being here, and I hope you enjoy these DIYs. so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure it is a true blessing and honor to have you all here if you all are new welcome i'm olivia with olivia's for me at tick home and i love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget i truly believe that crafting and decorating is so good for your heart and soul so i just want to encourage you all to keep up the good work crafting and decorating no matter where you're at in your life's journey and to keep putting one foot in front of the other it is so um amazing that you all are here and I'm just so honored and thankful. Now listen, I would love to invite you all to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe and punch the little bell, there's a spot where you can click all. That will update you every single time I post a new video and also pop over to my Livia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I share a ton of DIY crafts and inspiration over there as well, as well as I have a free little group page for you guys to join and it's just a spot for you guys to relax and post photos of your home decor and DIY projects. I want to compliment everybody who posts over there. You guys have some amazing, beautiful projects, and I want to encourage you guys to keep up the good work and also encourage you all to keep up the good work encouraging others. Remember, you're on a social media platform right now as you're watching this video, so you guys can always use your voice for good. Try to always leave kind comments on your fellow friends and family members' posts, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You don't ever know what somebody's going through, and that one little smile, heart, or encouraging word could truly mean the world for someone. And I know so many people out there have just had so much going on in the last couple of years, so just be kind. Put your voice out there in a kind manner. That's my little elegant tip for you all today. I hope you guys are having a gorgeous, blessed weekend. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.